Did you know that you can download Sims 3 traits into The Sims 2? Well, if you were unaware or a little bit overwhelmed by the process, which to be honest, that's why it took me this long to actually like download and use them, then I am here to help you understand because I downloaded all of this yesterday and did the hard part for you. So this absolute masterpiece of gameplay you can find on the Hexagonal by Pyramid Tumblr. And Hexagonal by Pyramid is honestly a god when it comes to The Sims 2. They have made so many fantastic mods, but this is just the icing, the cherry on the cake. This is, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. So you can have 99 plus traits in your Sims 2 game. Now, the thing about this is that when downloading the actual traits, they don't actually do anything. They're just kind of placeholders for modders to add different things to them later on. So you will need to download the traits and like the function of the traits a little bit separately. So these traits are technically objects. Um, they had thought about making them like invisible tokens, but instead they're kind of visible tokens. And I think that was a really great idea because as you can see here, they'll show up in your Sims inventory with these little icons. They'll also have little descriptions on what the traits are. So you're going to want to go here and you're going to want to download the traits um, right down there. And there are essentially two different versions of this. Um, one, you can find them in the catalog. They'll be in buy mode in the miscellaneous, miscellaneous section. And that's where I keep mine because I'm really, really bad at figuring out what to do with collection folders because it takes me so long to scroll through each individual collection and find the collection I'm looking for. Ah! And so this is what I use. And you can find a list of their guides here if you want to kind of create your own. So if you scroll down on the main traits project Tumblr, you will find a list of incredible traits and mods. So some people have created some very cool mods um, regarding occults. So you can have mermaids, fairies, genies. Um, there are some airbender ones, which is really cool. <laughs> Ghost Rider, sunlight immunity for vampires, uh, no jealousy. And then of course, there are some um, medieval cast ones and fantasy and medieval cast as well. I use these by Morsha. And these are absolutely incredible. They're ideally for historical gameplay and you can make people servants and outcasts and knights and you can give them social classes like Yaomans and such. And it's honestly just, it's so good. It's so good. And a lot of those actually uh, coincide and work alongside the Plum Bob Keep stuff, especially I think with the new Barnyard Bash pack that they just released. So if you are a historical player, don't worry, there is some incredible stuff for you as well. I use, um, I actually had downloaded the social casts a long time before I had downloaded these and that's because you can have the specific greeting where you bow and curtsy and that's actually a trait thing. So by default, when you download that, your Sims will bow and curtsy unless you give them different social classes and traits that will affect the way they greet each other. So there's some really, really cool stuff that has been developed alongside the traits project. After you download the traits here, and you can find a list of the traits here as well if you just kind of want to um, see what you're getting. After you download that, you're going to want to download the trait mods. And so you can see by the little icons here what these traits affect. It's, this takes a long time. It, it really, really does. So for the workout pack, for example, you have to click on it. Um, this tells you a little bit of, of what they do. So for athletic, Sims don't have comfort and energy penalty. They also have more fun while exercising. They'll struggle less than non-athletic ones. And so what you're going to need for most of these are the easy inventory check and the smarter EP check. Um, and it can also depend on what packs you have as well. And you'll have to click download for each and every one of these, which I, I really, it's such a pain. Honestly, that's why I took so long to actually do this because I didn't want to go through and download all of these individual mods. But 
it's worth it. It's so worth it. I've been really loving playing with it in game. And there's a bunch of other little things that go alongside these traits as well. So what I have recently downloaded is the custom pickpocketing interaction, which is perfect for your kleptomania sims. Um, you can beg for money, desperation actions are unlocked, wants disabler, want disabler for traits, um, have child not adopt. Like there's just a lot of stuff to go through here and you're going to want to spend some time with it before you download it. But I also wanted to show you the trait randomizer. So this is really cool. This is really cool. It shows up at, in your game as this like happy smiley face and it's also in miscellaneous where you'll find the traits. It took me a minute to figure that out, so I'm just letting you know where it is and what it looks like in advance because I'm bad at reading instructions. And what is really cool about this is that you can set the max number of traits sims can have based on their age, and you can choose if certain traits can't be chosen based on the sims' age, personality, aspiration, etc, etc. And so you can turn on and off inheritance of traits, which is really cool because it can alter the effect of whether or not sims have a chance to have traits from their parents, and there's so much more. So of course for this you'll need the actual traits, um, nightlife or later, and you click on this in-game. So just to show you a little bit about how these traits work in-game, we're gonna hop over to the Westerfield house. So this is where my family Jackson, Mabel, and their son Gregory live. Gregory is who we're going to be following a little bit today. So Gregory is one of my favorite sims. He's a good friend of Leonora in my Victorian sim challenge. And he is also an artist in training. He is hanging out a lot with my intellectual society, which I have very closely modeled after the romantic era chaos and indulgence of Percy Shelley and Lord Byron because I think they're crazy and I love it. So he spends a lot of time over at the intellectual salon, over to Sister Max's house, and Basically, he spends very late nights there practicing his painting, indulging in some classic alcoholism, and because of that, Gregory does not like mornings. So you can see his mood is up pretty high here. We're going to go ahead and set the hour to 6, and we're going to see what happens while he's awake in the morning. So for reference, Gregory is neurotic, a night owl and rebellious. So what I'm going to show you here has to do with his night owl trait. Now because Gregory is a night owl, he absolutely detests mornings, like significantly detests them. And so as the morning progresses, you will see his mood just drop. So at 6 a.m. we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. It'll happen in a few minutes. Um, I think it normally happens around 7. Oh my okay normally I don't let my sims use the fire extinguisher because this is the 19th century but this is I'm not even my rotation's not even started here. Oh my god. Well hopefully once no it's spreading. Are you serious? <gasps> Why is this game so hard? Oh okay okay. What is happening? Oh no, I have the Deadly Fires mod. I um may have downloaded a more dangerous fires mod so that my fires would sweep through quicker because I don't let my sims use fire extinguishers. And I'm really realizing now just how impossible it makes the fires <laughs> to handle. Oh good, pink soup of death. This is this is great. This is why I post videos. Okay, so we are back here. As we mentioned, he's neurotic, rebellious, and a night sim. A night sim, a night owl. So we're gonna go ahead and do some max motives there. We're gonna set the hour to seven, since that's about where we were. And uh, we're just gonna wait and watch his mood meter just absolutely tank as the morning carries on. So you can see it's steadily going down despite the fact that all of his needs are taken care of. I swear to god if you set that mac and cheese on fire again. Oh thank goodness. So it's gonna go all... why did that just go back? What 
is happening? So it's gonna go all the way down completely in the red and that's what is going to happen until he reaches um, midday. So we're gonna set the hour to 12 because it's only going to start going back up around 1 p.m. which is kind of crazy but like also realistic like if you're a night owl you're gonna want to be awake all hours and then you're gonna sleep in. So it's 12 30 we can see his mood start to creep back up slowly and that's gonna be happening until one o'clock when it's just going to spike and go back to normal. So as you can see he now has a positive mood meter again which is really great. Here I'm just going to show you a little bit about how to enact this mod. So we're going to go to miscellaneous, miscellaneous, and as you can see because I have them in my catalog instead of my collections, they are all here. I just think this is easier. This is where I keep a bunch of my random stuff like my bubonic rats and my pose boxes. <laughs> and you can click on it. So here socially awkward there's zero simoleon socially awkward sims try to fit in but sometimes say the wrong thing at the wrong time it's not easy being socially awkward but it sure is awkward so you place some of these out here and then real quick i just want to show you the randomizer it kind of looks like that i gotta find it here we are down here the trait randomizer so it's just like a decal you can put on your wall and what you do is you just take one of these and you put it in your inventory. Since all of the sims in this household already have their traits, we're just gonna delete these. And there is actually an invisible version of this as well. So if you don't want this really hideous mask, like I really kind of wish it was just a regular piece of artwork, but it is what it is. It kind of makes sense because it's representing like moods and stuff. But you can add a random trait to a sim you can remove all traits from a sim, and you can add missing traits. So this is what I did for my adult sims. I like my sims to have three traits. So when I first opened up this lot and none of my sims have traits, we click the randomization button. So why don't we go test this out with a sim who doesn't have any traits? and this will be really fun. You can also directly put them in your inventories, which I've done with a couple sims where it seems fitting, but for the sims I've been playing for a while who are part of my main families who have already started to develop this type of personality, I didn't really want to do that. I wanted something that felt appropriate to who they are. So let's go ahead and give some sims some traits randomly. I really love the randomizer. It makes things, it just makes things easier. Um, now you could just use like a Sims 3 trait randomizer, but that's just not something that I've done. Here we have sweet baby out. His name's Alexander. Oh my God. I'm a terrible swimmer. Okay, so here we have Alexander Garrett Lawson. His last name is still incorrect. He does not have any traits at the moment. So we're going to assign some random traits. And the way that these work as well, I think it actually plays into the um, traits, like the actual like character points that Sims have. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that there. We'll delete it in a bit. And we're going to add missing traits to Alexander King. All right, let's see what we got. They're automatically going to be at the front. Oh wait, maybe five, four. Why do you have so many traits? Okay, either way. He has the heavy sleeper trait, the good sense of humor trait. He's ambitious and he's dramatic. I love that. So if you don't like any of them, we're going to go ahead and take out good sense of humor because I want to have three traits. I think I just forgot to set it here. So options, max number of traits for teens. We're going to go with three. Yep, it's set at four. That's why that happened. So there's no penalty for just taking them out and deleting them. So that's a little bit about how that works. And then I just wanted to show you real quick in the collections. So I actually have my Morsha traits in the catalog, the traits medieval cast. So we've got quite a few and I also have them here. I, I also have these here, but I don't, I don't really use those. So we're going to go 
back to this, we can have sims that are knights, orphans, outcasts, servants, yeomans, bourgeoisie. You're not a middling yeoman, but you're not quite the wealthy merchant just yet. As part of the burgeoning middle class, you seek to earn your fortune through trade, hard work, and maybe some well-placed connections along the way. So he is actually the son of the first mayor that we've had in town. And so I think that bourgeoisie fits him quite well. He's got some really great connections. So we're going to go ahead and add that to him. And for those of you who are historical simmers who use Barnyard Bash, this I just want to show you really quick. So they have recently revamped and kind of like recataloged, recategorized the Barnyard Bash, made it a little bit less hefty in your downloads folders by kind of consolidating some stuff. But along with consolidation, what they've also added is trait support and new traits, which is so cool. So you now get farm hands, and this trait is meant to help sims do the jobs around the farm that need doing such as filling troughs and raking dung. And so a lot of these things are really cool. I'm excited to play with that in my game because it will have um, a lot of my sims do some more autonomous actions as well. So other items that may make use of various traits made by others, detailed in sections that follow. So this trait, as I said, is pretty healthy, but you can go all the way down to autonomy and traits. So good sims never steal livestock. Thank God. I have had so many cows stolen in my game. Like, how do you just steal a cow and put it in your pocket? But I love the chaos that it brings in, so I'm okay with it. Um, also, royals, nobility, and gentry cannot slaughter animals. So I really love the trait support that they've added here. I think that's really cool. Servants and neat sims autonomously collect dung and royals, nobility, and gentry need an inventory tool to collect or dispose of dung, which I think is really cool. Um, just like how royals, nobility, and gentry need an inventory tool to milk animals. So your sims aren't going to autonomously do something that's kind of like outside of their social class. Bravo! to all of the people involved in this. This was posted by our gracious, gracious monarch, Sun and Moon. So thank you, Frack, for all of this incredible stuff that you've done and how you've thought about making this enableable, enableable, and how you've made this functional with the traits mods. And of course, thank you to everyone who in was involved in the beta testing of this because I know it was just like, crazy. So that is going to be where we leave off today, but I'm just gonna, we're gonna delete that real quick. So I know this wasn't a comprehensive, like, example of everything because that would be honestly really hard to do, but I hope this kind of gave you a little bit of an example on how you can use these traits in both historical and modern gameplay as well. As you know, I'm a Victorian simmer and that's why I was really excited about like the social class and everything aspects of it. But anyways, thank you so much. If you've used this mod and you like it, let me know in the links below. If you're still a little bit confused, feel free to reach out. We can help you on the Discord and stuff. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.